What has happened? The Germans have begun to use our harbor as a base for submarines. Since when? Last week. The people are furious, but they can do nothing. How many troops are there here? Only a few. A battalion? Perhaps. We shall know in a minute if he's got anything. And if he has... Captain Mercier. Show him it. Will you come this way, please? Come in, Captain Mercier. How do you do? How do you do? Well, any luck? I think I have the information you require. Here is my full report on the German coastal defenses in northern and western France. Splendid. Uh, won't you sit down? Anything special? The Germans have begun to use Norville as a base de sous-marin. Submarine base? Norville. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Norville. But that's only a village. But it has a good harbor. This is the well. Norville. Well, how strong are the defenses there? There is only one battalion of troops in the town and a few naval technicians. I see. And the coast? It is very thinly held for 15 miles on either side of the town. There are no tanks, no heavy guns. In fact, there is no substantial body of troops within 80 miles. Uh, no troops within 80 miles? Lord, for an important base, it's very likely held. Yes, but probably with the hope that it won't attract our attention. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you very much, Captain Mercier. We're extremely grateful. At your service. Goodbye, sir. We'll keep in touch. That settles it. Norville. If we can put pay to the German base there, that ought to make those shipping figures take a turn for the better. How many men shall we need? Four. Brigade group should be enough. Right. I'll put that up to the chief of staffs at once. And if they agree, we can get the men off at night and land them at dawn on these beaches and somewhere here. Then they could make their way round, mop up the Bosch battalion, and hold the place while the sappers blow up these stores, oil dumps, lock gates, or anything else in there. See, the whole show should take, well, how long? Twelve hours? Good. That means we can get them off again that night. Mm. The 95th Brigade's standing by. They're fully trained. We can send them up to the new training area at Watercombe, put them through their final rehearsal. There shouldn't be any difficulty in getting them down to the channel. And we can slip them into a convoy going to the Near East. When the time comes, they can break away with a destroyer escort. You know, if the Bosch got onto this, It'd be goodbye to the brigade. What we need is a full-time security officer on this job to ensure secrecy. Richards would be the man for him. I'll see if they'll let us have it. Hello? Oh, Richards, we want you to come to the 95th Brigade for security. What are you going to do with them, sir? We are sending them up to Watercombe to do special training to go out on a special job. Watercombe? That's near Westport, isn't it? Mm. Who's the brigadier? Blunt, a grand fellow. Brigade headquarters at Newby. I better go and contact him right away. I suppose you can't give me any sort of idea what kind of a job it is I'm going to do. We are planning a raid for them. We don't want it to be a suicide squad. <laughs> Can you tell me where Brigade Headquarters are? Yes, sir. Up the hill, first to the right, follow the road round. Ah, here's the Brigadier's car, sir. You might as well follow him. Nice, friendly people. Tell you anything you want to know. Always well, sir. Yes, I'm afraid we shall have a few headaches on this job before we're through. 
I've always thought if I wanted a nice cushy job, I'd come to England as a German spy. <laughs> Do you know who I am? No, sir. Well, then, oughtn't you to have asked me for my pass? I thought you was with the Brigadier, sir. Well, I'm not. Might be an enemy agent for all you know. May I come in? My name's Richards. All right. You're the security man, aren't you? Yes, that's right. We were expecting you. My name's Harcourt. Yeah. This is Johnston, our intelligence officer. Hello. How you doing, sir? Well, you better see the Brigadier right away. He'll be free in a minute. Good. Oh, by the way, I just ticked off that sentry of yours just now. He never asked me for my pass. Well, he doesn't know me from Adam. I hope you don't mind. Oh, not at all. He ought to know him better. I'll talk to his CO. Uh, Tenth Chilterns, isn't he? Yes, Cooper's his CO. Just take this stuff back to your CO, Cummings. Tell him I'll come round in the morning and discuss it with him. Right, sir. All right, gentlemen. Oh, uh, not that one. Uh, just listen to this. Oh, this is Richard, sir, the security man. Oh, how do you do, Richard? I'm glad to see you. As a matter of fact, this is something in your line. Yes, sir. I understand that you're moving from Newby to Watercombe. May I point out that we have a branch near there at Westport as well as at Newby. We should be pleased to carry out any orders you may be good enough, and so on. The wine merchant. Now, how the devil did he find out? The men know nothing of it. I'm certain of that, sir. What do you think, Richard? I wonder, sir, if it was mentioned in the mess. You mean the mess corporal might have heard? Anyway, just check up on it. There must be a leakage somewhere. Right, Come along in, Richard. Oh, by the way, you might tell the battalions they're getting seven days' leave. Tell them to work out their own spread over. Does that mean the... It means just seven days' leave. I'm afraid you're going to find me an awful ruddy nuisance. Seven days' leave? Perhaps that means we're going overseas at last. As you see, our security certainly needs tightening up. Of course, we're going to Watercombe, as you probably know. But we want the men to think they're going out east, to leave as a blind. We're even going to issue them with tropical equipment. Sit down. Thanks, sir. Now, is there anything else we can do? Well, sir, the important thing is security in the initial stages. Once the enemy gets to know there's something on, it's fairly easy for him to find out what it is. You're right. I'll talk to the officers and NCOs before leave starts. And I suggest, sir, that you begin censorship right away. Postal and telegraph. The men oughtn't to be allowed to use letterboxes or post offices. Well, we can put that into operation today. You know, I'm looking forward to this show, Richards. It's come just in time to prevent any chance of the brigade getting stale. You better start in right away and let me know where you think we're weakest. <laughs> No pleasing some people. What do you think, Johnny?
Good evening, sir. Coming, darling. Who is it? Oh, hello, Tommy, darling. Come on in, have a drink. Hello, Ma. Good evening. Well, I wanted to come round and see you before the end of the show. Before all the others come barging in. Possibly my last chance. Your last? Oh, damn, that's the end of the whiskey. Ma, I'll be a love and run through the back way to the bull and get me a refill. All right, dear. Oh, here, let me pay for it. <sighs> last chance. I've got another week here yet. Well, I know you have, but I haven't. Oh, don't tell me that awful old war office is moving you. I'm afraid so. Oh, but darling, why do they have to pick on you? Well, it's not only me, it's the whole brigade. Oh, hell. Lim, ah, oh, you're having a lovely time. Oh, that. Oh, that. Oh, that. Did you see him? He <laughs> <laughs> loved every minute of it. I could see his face. Oh, what are you talking about? Oh, Hello, Ma. Uh, how's your ladyship? Oh, give him a drink to that little twerp as usual, just because his father's got 25,000 a year. I miss! Just I miss! I'm serving, can't you see? I do get sick of my job sometimes. I wouldn't mind it. Huh? Too skinny. <laughs> Don't worry about it, boy. It's a bit brown off. So would you, Ruddy, will be. Well, what's the matter with him? No leave, going back to the depot. Why? His legs. What's the matter with his legs? Well, you see, Martha, the brigade's going overseas. At least it looks like it. We've all been given leave. And the army's not so bloody generous as to give the old brigade leave if we ain't going to do something bloody horrible to him afterwards. <laughs> He's got housemaids, me, so he don't go overseas and he don't get no leave. Oh, rough luck. <laughs> oh, come on, I can't wait here all night. You know, it's going to be terrible not seeing you again. Not sending you anywhere dangerous, are they? Well, I don't know, darling. I have no idea. Not going overseas right away. As a matter of fact, no. Now, look here. For God's sake, don't tell anyone, but I rather believe we're going to do some sort of special training first. Well, where will you be then? Well, that I'm afraid I can't tell you because it's hush-hush. Oh, what a shame. You see, I'm leaving the show at the end of next week, doing the act solo in Variety. I might have got a date near where you're going to be. Do you mean you really would? Look, you don't have to tell me any of your precious military secrets because I'm a German spy, but they're my provincial dates. <laughs> If you're going to be near any one of those, maybe... I say. Ah, uh, 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 careful. Oh, don't be an ass, darling. No, you couldn't make Westport a week or two earlier, could you? Westport? I might. I'll try and fix it with my manager. Well, that's fine, because if you could be at Westport when the brigade's training at Watercombe, what could be better? Oh, phew. Oh, dear. Such a job to get it, too. Oh, just in time. Oh, we must drink to our last meeting, mustn't we? Oh, that's all right, Ma. You can keep that. Oh, thank you, sir. You better get changed. You're on in a few minutes. All right, Ma. Well, here's to au revoir. Cheers. Come on, come on, come on. Now then, darling, out you go. Okay. Well, with any luck, I'll see you at... Ma's a German spy, too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Good night. Well? Did he tell you anything? They're moving. I know that. They're going overseas. I know that, too. Seems I've been wasting my time. Well, the men don't know when they're going. Only the officers know that. Funny. He didn't mention it. Oh, yes, he did. Come on. Hell, I'm sick and tired of the whole lousy racket. Do your own dirty work for a change. Listen here, my girl. Oh, bitch! All right. This is where we part. And I hope you can get your coke ration from somewhere else. I'll give it up. It's only a habit anyway. Oh, no, my girl. For kind of habit you can't give up. I've tried, and I know. Ta-ta. Pleasant dreams on a couple of aspirins. Wait a minute. They're not going overseas yet. They're going to Watercombe for special training. Are you sure of that? Yes. I told him I'd try and make Westport a couple of weeks earlier, so as I'd go over and see him. Some hopes he's got. I don't know so much. Your call, Mr. Coming. Have I got everything? Whatever you may be, in pubs or buses, or in the car when someone gives you a lift, or even chatting with friends and relatives, take it for granted that everyone you meet may, deliberately or unconsciously, give you away to the other side. Now, you all know what a traitor is. A traitor is a man who deliberately gives away his side to the enemy. But a patriot can easily do as much harm as a traitor. He can do it by letting slip some unimportant tuppenny hitney detail that may have no value in itself, whatever. But that detail may be the one clue that gives a meaning to several other details, equally small. Together, 
Those details may make sense. They may reveal to the enemy that some big move is on. So think twice before talking about military affairs. When in doubt, say nothing. Even if saying nothing makes you look a fool. Every time you positively check yourself, you're helping to win the war. That's what I want to ram home to every man jack of you. Bear it in mind all the time you're on leave. And after, drum it into your men. Tell them anything they say may get back to Germany. I don't say it always will, but it may. Gentlemen, we have your reports from the Auslands Bureau on its work in Brazil. A similar report from Mexico. And another from Afghanistan. All this is good, gentlemen, as far as it goes. But what I want is new facts. No matter how small, from small facts, there often spring big ideas. Come. Yes, Horn? Excellency, I have just received a radio report from England that the 95th Brigade is proceeding to a new training area at Watercombe before going overseas. Watercombe? Where is that? Ah, near Westport. That is where the big convoys start from. Very interesting. What do we know about the 95th Brigade? It is a normal brigade, Excellency. Commander, Brigadier Blunt, an efficient soldier with a distinguished record against us in the last war, and new personnel has been posted to the brigade. Ah, and now Watercombe. You see, gentlemen, a new fact. Well done, Horn. It may mean nothing. On the other hand, who have we working for us at Watercombe? No one, Excellency. Our men are all engaged in watching convoys at Westport, but our woman agent reports she is following up the information. You cannot rely on that. Someone must be sent immediately. Send two men. We must have details of equipment as well as of the type of training. There are some good men working on the refresher course at this moment. This is number 23, Herr Obersleitner. Number 23. You know England well? I was in business in the north of England for 10 years, until shortly before the war. Good. So you have a complete English outfit. Here are your papers. You'll be landed by rubber boat from one of our U-boats at some part of the English coast. You will then find your way to Mr. Barrett, our agent, a bookseller in Westport. He will give you further instructions. Meanwhile, study those and await your sailing orders. That's all. This is number 16, Herr Oberstleutnant. Number 16. You will travel to England by air and land by parachute after dark. I understand you know England well. I was a clerk at an haulage contractor's. Here are your papers. <laughs> Goodbye, Jim. Take care of yourself. Okay, that's all I will. And try and get another leave soon, Jim. Seven days goes all for two. Pat, don't you worry. I'll be back before you know where you are. But when? How do I know? I'm not a blinking general yet, you know. Goodbye, darling. Now, take care of yourself. I'll be back soon. It's the worst of the ruddy army. You never know what they're going to do with you next. You can't even tell your missus when you're going overseas. Telling us all now, aren't you, chum? You never know who might be listening. What are you both here for? I wasn't talking to you. Hey, knock it, Jimmy. You better go and sleep this lot off. I'm oh. Thanks, pal. Be one of your lot? Yes, but he doesn't know what some of us know. I've got a pal who's Miss Corporal of Brigade Headquarters. He says we're men to go overseas at all. Not yet, anyhow. He's going to move up to Watercombe. More special training. That's funny. We're going to Watercombe, too. Well, what are you in? Troop ships, you know. Same as they use in the Lofoten raids. Were you on that? What? Now who's talking? Now who's talking? If you hadn't been on that, you'd have been met by the whole of the German army. Here, here, pull yourself together, Jimmy. Oh, pull yourself together. Talk about broadcasting. Ought to be on the wireless, some of them. That's right. What's yours? Oh, don't mind if I do. Brother? Mm -hmm. Two brother, I'll take. Are you on leave, old chap? Yes, right. What unit? 10th Chilton. Oh, I know. The 95th, aren't they? That's right. What company, old man? Headquarters. Been with them long? Since November 1939. 
That's funny. I've been with the headquarters company of the Trent Chilkins for over six months. I've never seen him before. Who's the CEO? You're really suspicious, aren't you? Go on, who is he? Chap called Cooper. Oh, that's right enough. Uh, you was out in France with him when he won the MC. That's right. Only it wasn't the MC, it was the DSO, wasn't it? What's the matter, old chap? You absent without leave? No, of course not. He just really knows it, that's all. Well, so you be. If you had seven days CB for getting the right man right, Lord knows what would happen to me if I got the wrong man wrong. <laughs> well, so long, chaps. Dear sir, that bloke was never in my company. Well, there's a chap in the buffet bar, says he's in the 10th Chilterns, and he ain't. How do you know? Oh, because I'm in the 10th Chilterns, sir. Well, do you know everybody in the battalion? No, sir. But he says he's in the headquarters company, and that's my company. I've never seen him before. Well, who do you think he is? Well, I don't know, sir. But he might be a German spy. <laughs> a German... A German spy? Well, how do you imagine he got here? Well, I couldn't say, sir. But the papers say there's been some parachutes come down. All right, fetch him in. Very good, sir. What are you going to do about it? The fellow's probably tight. We must do something. And if these fellows make a report, we must follow it up. Otherwise, they won't report anything. Well, you don't really think he is a parachutist, do you? I should think it's extremely unlikely, but we can easily find out. If you're on the level, you've got nothing to worry about. Very good, sir. All right, come in. Go on, get in. Let me see your paybook. What is your regiment? 10th Battalion, Chilton, sir. Where are you stationed? Newby, sir. And before that? Tidworth, sir. No, sir. We was in Norwich till March. He doesn't know what he's talking about, sir. Oh, we'll soon see about that. Close the door. Take off your blouse. Oh, me, sir? Yes, you. Now your shirt. My shirt, sir? Yes, your shirt. And don't try to be funny. Now your vest. Take off your vest. Uh, oh, that's a good piece of work. Uh, what's your name? Damn, no, That's a good piece of work, Devlin. Now, will you collect an escort and we'll hand this man over to the first military headquarters we come to? Very good, sir. Escort. More ruddy fatigues. Serves me right for poking my blinking nose in. if I'm on the right road to Westport? Sure. You turn left here. Are you going my way? Would you care for a lift? It's very kind of you. I thought of catching the bus at the crossroads. You should have checked up on me before telling me the way like that. <laughs> for all you know, I might be a German spy or something. <laughs> <laughs>
Good morning, sir. I want to see the proprietor. I have a book here which I'm anxious to sell. Just a moment, please. There is a gentleman outside, Mr. Barnett. He wants you to buy this book. Oh, yeah. It's very interesting. Ask him to wait a moment, will you? Mr. Barrett, it will not be long. Thank you. Most interesting book, sir. I think I've got a client who might like to buy it. Will you come inside? By the way, I don't know your name. Davis. My papers are all in order. I understood I should get further instructions from you. Yes, that's right. Sit down, will you? Now, sit down. Thank you. You're lucky. No, thanks, no. Here, yeah, go on. Thank you. That girl of yours, she isn't English? No, she's a Dutch refugee. You see, Westport's always known me as an anti-Nazi. So is she, for that matter. She's a very useful cover. And if she should get to know anything, her parents are in Rotterdam. The Gestapo can always take them under its protection. <laughs> Now to business. You'll go to Watercombe, a little place down the coast here. You'll stay at the White Hart Hotel. I've booked a room there for you. In the name of Davis? Yes. The 95th Brigade is expected in Watercombe in about three days' time. You will be comfortably settled in before they arrive. If I want anything urgently, what shall I do? You ring this number, Westport 77250. Ask for Ned. It'll be me. You talk about family affairs. What identity papers have you brought with you? Oh, them here. Hmm. Ration book, identity card, driving license, passport. No? God, our people are thorough. Every detail, just as I sent it over. Yeah, you should be all right with those. It's the safest alibi we can find for you. Can you tell me anything more about Mr. Davis? He's dead. Oh. This is the parish magazine of St. Barnabas, Rockcliffe Park, Cardiff. Um, among those whose death must be presumed through enemy action is Mr. Arthur Davis. Mr. Davis, who was 46, was for many years one of the managers in Linnet and Linnet Metal Tube Workers. He was unmarried. I see. You are not a very distinguished citizen. You can embroider your past as much as you like. I recommend you to say as little as possible. You automatically attract sympathy through having been bombed out. Yes. You've had a narrow shave. Pardon me, have you a copy of my account? No. Oh, how wonderful. I thought you did go back. Did you miss your train? Mm -hmm. Couldn't have known I was coming. You didn't wait. Oh. What will you do now? Get the next one on three days CV, I expect. I say, um, oughtn't you to work? She is reading Gone with the Wind, a chapter at a time. Yes, yeah, nice to be gone with the wind, too, if I don't want to miss the next one. Write to me before you sail. Of course. And send me your address as soon as you get there. Father, I promised you all that last night. Besides, you know, 
You people here aren't exactly outside the war zone. I will write. You know I will. The better. Are you taking that book, madam? Oh, whatever came over me? I, I don't want it at all. Anything wrong, Miss Lehman? A customer seemed to think our books were free. Some of them fetch quite high prices, don't they, Mr. Davis? Good day to you, sir. The army of occupations arrived, Mrs. Taylor. Good for business, eh? Good day. Not much use with supplies cut down as they are. Still, we're luckier than some places. This is the first lot of soldiers we've had. I suppose you're having some of the officers built in here. No, they're all going into camp. Excuse me, madam. Please hold me. Gosh, what a bit of money. What's your red bargain? Madam Johnny, does she live here? Westport, ten miles away. What will be a thousand? You'll never be allowed to see it. Boys, we are now passing the oldest public house in Great Britain. Why? watching the troops. Don't you know this is a prohibited area? Is it? I'm so sorry. It doesn't say so. Still, I quite understand. I beg your pardon. A hand, isn't it? Reconnaissance. Possibly. Well, they've chased him away anyhow. That's odd. I gather Jerry hasn't been in this part of the world for months. If they have any reason to suppose, Still, I hope I'm wrong. I hope you are, sir. How do you spell Jenkins, Johnny? You ought to know that by now. Thanks for nothing. Well, it's going to be a nice how do you do, isn't it? And you've got to post your love letters in an army post box. And a man got no private life these days. morning. Do you prefer to go home? I am all right. There's nothing. And your parents? I've tried and tried to get a word from them.
Miss Lehmanns. I'm so sorry, I'm afraid I opened this by mistake. The boyfriend? Yes. He wants me to go and spend Sunday with him. Oh, so he hasn't gone abroad after all. No. Oh, it's well timed. You needed something to cheer you up, didn't you? Number 23 reports that the troops exercising at Watercombe have rope sole shoes, grappling irons, ladders, pulleys, and other tackle. Sounds like a cliff landing. There is no evidence of their having any new methods of exploding landmines. Well, why the devil should they? If they were planning a surprise raid, they would hardly wish to begin it by exploding mines. This is good, as far as it goes, but we must have more detail. Number 16 has not yet reported to our chief agent at Westport or anywhere else. I'm afraid he may have been caught. And our agent at Westport must make other arrangements. Very good, Excellency. We might also use the report of that woman at Watercombe. Certainly. There are signs that the enemy is becoming interested in Watercombe. That reconnaissance plane, for instance. I'm quite certain that didn't come over by accident. The Bosch has got information about this place, and we've got to stop him getting any more. But you've got to help me stop him. <coughs> Remember, the enemy has highly trained agents. They may be in any walk of life. Grocers, pub keepers, barbers, politicians, people whom the enemy's bribed or blackmailed, even people who admire Nazism so much that they're ready to betray their own country for it. Watch out for these people all the time. Do you mean you want us to report to everyone who asks us questions about what we're doing? I do. I know we have professional security services functioning in this country, uh, field security, police, and so on, and I think they're efficient. But they can do little without your help. You are the people who can stop the enemy getting that vital information that he wants. You are the real security men. Anything new? Uh, yes, sir. There are one or two things. An officer's lost a map. Yes. And there are three more cases of flashing lights. You always are. Better investigate them. Yes, sir. Oh, and three soldiers came in. They said that uh, last night a man at the White Hart asked some questions about the embarkation exercises. Good for them. What was his name? Calls himself Davis, sir. Davis. Oh, yes, the police sergeant mentioned him. Well, I don't suppose there's anything wrong with the man. There's no harm in checking up on him. I think I'll go right away. Right. Uh, Mr. Davis, yes, we have. A very nice gentleman. He's been bombed out. Has he been here very long? Oh, about a week, I should think. Why? Is anything wrong? No, but I wonder if you'd mind pointing him out to me. Oh, very well. He's in the coffee room, I think, having tea. I wonder, I wonder if you can manage it without him seeing me. Oh, very well. Uh, come up this way. There he is. Thanks. Good God. That's not Mr. Davis. No, I know. Thank you very much. Oh, tin hat and gas mask and things. Oh, they've laid on a whole heap of new gadgets. Excuse me. Can I speak to you for a moment? Oh, yes, sir. I shan't keep them a second. What's that girl doing here? Oh, she's perfectly all right, sir. Yes, but what's she doing here? She's playing at Westport. She's staying in the hotel? No, she just happened to come over for the afternoon. Very odd. Yes, sir. Well, as a matter of fact, she may... Well, I rather believe I did just mention Watercombe, sir, when we were at Newby, but she's perfectly all right, sir. She's 
staying here for dinner with you? Yes, does that upset you? I'm delighted. Nothing serious, I hope, Tommy. Oh, no, nothing important. Well, as I was saying... Hello. Is that Westport, 7713? I want to speak to Chief Inspector Jolly, please. Who's there? Police. What do you want? Are you Miss Clare's dresser? Yes, I am. Who are you? Inspector Jolly, Special Branch, Westport. A lot of luggage for a strip tease act, hasn't she? What's in that one? Wardrobe and props. Oh, let me. Open that one. Nothing here, sir. I want to hang these up anyway. What about this one? Oh, I don't know. I haven't got the key of that. She keeps it. What's in these? Oh, I don't know. Never seen them in my life before. I don't know everything she travels about with her. Business. Direct hit, eh? No, thanks. Go on. Oh, thanks. You must have had a narrow escape. I did indeed. Only just getting over it. Well, you'll find it nice and quiet here. What made you think of water come Oh, I don't know. I used to come up here for my holidays as a boy, you know. You lived in Newport long? Not Newport. Cardiff. No. You want her on the phone, sir? Thank you. Excuse me. Hello, Richard's here. Yes, Jolly. You have. Good. You, you found what? My God. Yes, I know where she is. All right, you leave that to me. Yes. Yes, all right. Straight away. Straight away. They took a hell of a lot of fixing, and they've given me the most awful place in the program. Shoved me right in after the interval with everybody in the bar. Still, Tommy, darling, it's worthwhile being together again. Oh, look who's back. Your little friend seems very busy, doesn't he? What is he, a military policeman or something? Well, I think he thinks he is. And to top it all, they give me blue limes for my finale. They won't see a single thing out front. Excuse me, miss. With Mrs. Taylor's comment, will you please spare a moment with her in the office? Well, what the hell? Look, perhaps I'd better come too. No, Tommy dear, you stay there. Order me another drink. Keep it cool till I come back. Say them again, please. Two? Shillings, please. Westport, double seven two five zero. Is that you, Ned? I got your letter about Aunt Mary. So sorry she's not well. 
I'd like to come and see her. Well, Cummings. You haven't got anything against her, have you, sir? I'm afraid you won't see her again. She's an enemy agent, all right. What will they do to her, sir? Trial in the court of law and hang her. What's your blondie? Yes, and they sent a flying squad car for her. Out from Westport. Took her straight to the clink. Blimey, that was quick work, all right. You bet. And she her being a German spy. <laughs> Blimey, you wouldn't think a girl like that could hide anything. Hey, Sergeant, what is it? It's Mr. Davis, sir. He's gone. Gone? Where? When? Tonight, a short while ago. He's gone to Arrogate. The arrest seems to upset him. His nerves not being too good. I see. Only I thought I'd just let you know, sir. Thanks. Is there anything I can do, sir? No, I don't think so, thanks. Sir. Good night, sir. Good night. And who may Mr. Davis be? Uh, a rather suspicious character staying at the White Hart, sir. Oh, not another one. These people seem to concentrate around you. You're a sort of flypaper for the spies. As a matter of fact, we've nothing against this man, really, but I'm glad he's gone. I think the training area is fairly clear for the time being, sir. It was difficult enough as it was. Why you should send that girl to Watercombe when I'm there? I didn't send her. She doesn't work in this area. Well, she was there today, and she's been arrested. So they know for certain now that we're working on the 95th Brigade. They were already getting suspicious. Their security men sounded me this afternoon. So that's it. You're afraid of your own skin. Don't be a fool. My value there is gone once they suspect me. You know that. At Watercombe, yes. As it happens, you can be more useful elsewhere. We've lost number 16. You will replace him. What was he working on? Ordnance Depot. Name, please? Davis. This is a hard job. I don't know if it's quite what you're expecting. I'm down on my luck. Take this to the employment exchange. They'll give you a pass to get you into the depot. Report tomorrow morning at 8. Next, please. New one, you mate? Yes. Big place, isn't it? Yeah. I reckon they got enough explosives here to supply the whole ruddy army. Any accidents? Not yet. But they will have sooner or later with all these ruddy women about. I wouldn't if I were you, mate. She won't thank you. What a burp. <laughs> can I lend you a hand? I can manage, thanks. I'm perfectly competent to do this job myself. Bad luck, just when you were starting out. Damn careless, these men about here. They sprinkle nails around like bird seed. That'll be all right. I shall never catch up with the others now. And I'll get help from the sergeant. What do you do round here? I'm a hod carrier. Hod what? I'm a hod. I'm helping to build a shelter. Oh. Right, will you get the spare? Welcome. Have you always been a... Uh, I mean, you don't talk a bit like a... whatever it is you are. I suppose I don't. I had a little business of my own. It was bombed. I... I lost all my savings in it. That's all right. Have one? Oh, thanks very much. Oh, uh, is that all right here? Oh, yes, the explosive shed right down there. Thank you. Thanks. I say, why don't you...
don't you come to our dance tonight? I didn't know there was one. Yes, it's in the gymnasium, the ATS Weekly Dance. This'll get you in. I'll look out for you. Thank you. Going to dance. Hey, not that way. Oh, thanks. Glad you were able to come. It's a bit of a squash, isn't it? But the band's marvellous. Um, do you know Sergeant Ramsbottom? I've forgotten what your name is. Davis. Well, come on, let's go and have some, shall yeah. we? What do you have? No, these are on me. I'm hostess here. Beer, then, please. The same here. Two beers and a shandy, please. You know, I'm simply whacked. We drove all the way there and back with only half an hour's break. Where did you go? Just outside West. Now, now, no giving away secrets. I'm not doing anything of the kind. Oh, there's Sergeant Hayhurst. She left her flapjack in our mess. Um, we'll have the next one, shall we? Hot in here. Hmm. A cigarette? Thanks. What's your job? I'm working for the builders. Oh, lucky man. Why? Well, you keep regular hours, don't you? I do 12-hour shifts, and even then I'm lucky to get off. You must be very busy here. Busy? Do you realize that we have to maintain 150,000 vehicles from this place, and they all think their requirements are urgent? To give you one example, we've got two divisions going overseas next week. On top of that, I get a request for a whole lot of special equipment from the 95th Brigade. Immediate, that is. Now, I ask you, what could be more immediate than sending two divisions overseas? But, oh, no. I tell you, I shall end this war in a padded cell. Oh, match? I've got a date for this one. So long. Two divisions are going overseas next week. The 95th Brigade is getting special equipment, explosives, etc. sent to them on immediate priority. Immediate? Mm -hmm. Two divisions tally with what I already know. There's a convoy leaving Westport towards the end of next week for the Near East. But the 95th Brigade? Where are they going? I don't know. Hmm, you'd better go back to Watercombe and find out. I can't do that. I made an excuse for leaving. If I went back, I'd be under suspicion at once. You'll have to send someone else. I have no one I can spare. It'd be madness for me to go back either to Watercombe or to the Ordnance Depot. Very well. There'll be other work for you to do. You report here daily by phone until I can give you instructions. Good day, Mr. Davis. Miss uh, Lehmanns. Sit down, will you? There's some rather disquieting news for you. Your parents are in danger in Rotterdam. They're suspected of sabotage. How do you know that? Well, I have ways of finding out these things. Now, you mustn't fret. I think I've found a way to help them. I would do anything. I know that. You're going to see your young man in Watercombe on Sunday. Yes. Oh, please do not tell anyone. He sent that letter uncensored. I'm not supposed to know where he is. Yeah, I understand that. But uh, what has this to do with my parents? Miss Lehmanns, you're going to be very useful to me. Yes, Mr. Barrett. I want you to find out where his brigade is going. And when. Why do you want to know that? 
For a report I'm preparing. A report? I do not understand. A report for Berlin. My mother was a German, Miss Lehmanns. I am a German. I do my duty as a good German must. The 95th Brigade is going on a certain exercise. You will find out for me what it is. I would not dream of doing such a thing. I am a refugee here. I've had great kindness from the English. I Miss could Lehmanns, are the English, is your young man even, of more importance to you than the health of your family in Rotterdam? Mr. Barrett. Do I need to speak more plainly? You will get this information for me on Sunday, or your family will be taken into protective custody. The order has already been issued. It can be cancelled if you provide this information. Nothing else can save them from... Nothing else, remember. Answer the shop, will you? Uh, good morning. You are getting in a book for me, Commander Bowen. Oh, yes, sir. I have it ready. That is right, I think. Oh, yes, sir. It is right. Good morning. This information. Could anything happen to the brigade because of it? Happen? No, of course not. I told you, it's for a report. A matter of routine. Gosh, it's good to see you. So, you are looking fine. You're not looking too well. After all the trouble I have taken. Anything wrong? Let's get out of here. Up on the cliffs, out of the way. I may not see where you are living. Good Lord, no, there'd be a hell of a riot if you were found here. That's why I said to stop outside the village. Why? Red tape. Do you mean because I am an alien? <laughs> you needn't look so guilty. No, it's because no one's supposed to know we're here. Is it so very secret, then? You'd be surprised. Gosh, this is good. Oh, it has been so wonderful today. So far from the war. And now we have to go back to it. We needn't pack up yet. I have to catch the bus. It is the last today. Oh, gosh, I forgot. Oh, we'll just make it. Ron, may I come again next Sunday? We shall be gone by then. Gone? Where? Well, those three ships in the river are ready to take us right away into the blue. Tomorrow. Well, I don't know exactly when. Joan, do you know what it is you are going to do? I'm just an ordinary soldier. I don't believe even the officers know until they get the mosaics. Mosaics? Yes, but don't let's waste precious time. Whatever happens, you needn't worry, darling. We're a pick brigade. We know our stuff. You ready? We cannot say goodbye, the boss. Say goodbye to me now. Darling. I hope you had a pleasant day. You know, Mr. Davis, don't you? You can speak quite freely in front of him. Good evening. Good evening. I trust you got the information I wanted, Miss Lehmanns? No, I did not. The Earl does not know where they are going. Well, then, does he know when they're going, or where from? Straight from their camp. 
On board those ships out in the bay. I see. You're quite certain he doesn't know their destination? Quite sure. Not even the officers will till they get there. The what? Mosaics, I think the word is. Mosaic? Aerial photographs. Thank you, Miss Lehmanns. You'd better get home now before the raid becomes any worse. My parents. You'll be perfectly safe for the time being. Your case? You can let yourself out, can't you, Miss Lehmanns? Photographs. They're so damned hard to get. From them we can find the brigade's objective. We must get at least a portion of those mosaics, either identified ourselves or send it to Berlin. We've got a man leaving in 24 hours' time with some other information. Take this dental plate to London at once. Ask for an appointment with Dr. Walter. That's his address. This dental plate will introduce you. I hope I'll get back in time. I'll get back as soon as you can. If the shop isn't open, let yourself in with this. Yes. Night train for London leaves at 9.30. Mm -hmm. You should have plenty of time to catch it. Well, good luck. You told me that information was a routine matter. How did you get in here? Never mind that. The brigade is in danger. You lied to me. Not at all. Then why have you sent that man to London? Oh, he was going anyway. He was not. I heard all you said. That information is important. The brigade is in danger. John. And you told me nothing could happen. Well, naturally, I can hardly expect you to get that information if I do. <laughs> I'll have to wait. Nothing incriminating was left there, you're sure of that? Positive. I've given you all his papers and here's the transmitter. The police will assume that the girl murdered Barrett and then committed suicide. Now, about those mosaics? It won't be easy. If we steal a copy, it'll be discovered and the operation will probably be cancelled. A copy must be borrowed, photographed and then returned. You realize how urgent it is? Perfectly. Fortunately, the English are usually very careless about such things. Uh, well, if you look in about five o'clock this afternoon, I'll do my best to have your plate ready for you. I'm very grateful. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning. Mr. Vernon here, yet? Yeah? He's waiting, Doctor. Ask him to come in, will you? Oh, good morning, Doctor. Oh, good morning, Mr. Vernon. How have you been after the extraction? No pain, I hope? No, no, none at all. Ah, oh, good. Well, let's have a look at things. Yes. Now, I've got an urgent job for you. We want a copy of a mosaic that's being sent to Waterton to the 95th Brigade. Gosh, that's a tough one. Yes, I know. They'll be preparing it now at the interpretation unit. Now, I suggest... Hello? Interpretation unit? Yes? Air Ministry? 
Which ones? For Watercombe? But I've already told the Air Ministry they'd be ready today by one o'clock. They'd be flown straight up. Quite, yes. And the Air Ministry copy? Wing Commander Kenton will fetch it himself. I don't know why there's any need for you to check up everything twice. Yes, one o'clock. Cafe Regal. Am I late? No, darling, you're bang on time. Will you have a drink? No, thanks, but I'm starving. Well, let's go straight in. I mustn't leave my secret documents lying about. Are they really secret? <laughs> Not really, but I like to think they are. This way, please, sir. Is this all right, darling? Lovely. Grand. Table, please, waiter. I'm sorry, sir. We have no table for a few minutes. We'll reserve this one for me when it's disengaged, will you? I'll be back in ten minutes. I'm sorry. We're right out of stock of those. I'm afraid these are all we've got left, sir. Oh. Yes, I'll take that one, thanks. Thank you. Good day, sir. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you must. Why not? <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Good. Not my briefcase. You must have taken someone else's. Blast. What's that? Oh, I'm so sorry. Where have you been? Now, let me see. I had lunch at the Cafe Regal. I had it when I was there. Get me the Cafe Regal. You can get court martial for that sort of thing, you know. Now, don't frighten me. Was there anything important in it? Nothing. Only a set of mosaics that the combined ops people wanted to show to the cabinet. They're probably out of date anyhow. Is that the Cafe Regal? Give me the hall porter. This is Wing Commander Kenton. Oh, you have? Splendid. Well, hang on to it, will you? I'll come round and fetch it and bring the other one back. What a bit of luck. Some fellow took mine by mistake, but has just brought it back. You're court martial after all. No, no harm done. Mr. Davis. Good afternoon, Mr. Davis. I've got your plate ready for you. Splendid. Quick work. Can you identify the place? Unfortunately, no. I suggest you take one section only. The rest I'll burn. Barrett told me nothing about his courier. How do I find him? I've been in touch with Barrett's number two. Palmer's the name. I found his address amongst Barrett's papers. He'll be sending off a courier tonight from Westport. I'll warn him you're coming. Now, which is the most suitable section? You say you know this place. I was born there, sir. You will have no difficulty in landing your man on the beaches. The harbour itself is more complicated. Mm. And you'd better go in with the main party. Very well, sir. And you'll be able to help them. And will you explain the general layout of the harbour to the CRE here? You can, uh, you can let the men know they're sailing tomorrow night. Yes, sir. For Arabia. Get up, parade. With your camels. Oh. Oh. Da, da, dee, 
before they start setting the town on fire. Go easy with those cigarettes. Ah, to hell. Fix it so it doesn't crackle. And I'll tell you one thing. I'm not the one to be taking any more trips to this country. Not for all the danger money in the Bank of England. We pay you well enough, don't we? Uh, it's just little enough I get for the double danger I go through. There you are. lectures have their uses, more than the British realize. Mother herself would be needing a tin hat on a night like this. Good night now. Good night. about the end of your part of the job. If the Boschers were coming, I don't think it would be your fault. And thanks for all you've done. Best of luck, sir. I've seen the three girls off to school. They look nice in their new summer kit, eh? Goodbye. The 95th Brigade sailed from Watercombe this evening, equipped for the tropics. It looks as though we've been wasting our time, Horn. Brigade is evidently joining the convoy going east. We shall know as soon as the mosaic arrives. Where is this mosaic? It is due to reach Spain tomorrow morning. From there, it will come in the diplomatic bag. If it catches the morning plane, we should have it here in the afternoon. Tell them to hold the plane for it. Until we get that mosaic, we have no evidence that the brigade is coming any nearer to us than North Africa. This is urgent. I know. Can I try one of these? Yes, sir. Ah.
looks as if we shall certainly be able to land you at dawn tomorrow. Well, gentlemen, the brigadier's decided that zero hour tomorrow will be at 0545 hours. Is that before or after dawn? Just before dawn. Hello, chaps. Are you all buttoned up for dawn tomorrow? Yes, sir. Have you warned you made for a right inspection? No, but I'll see about it, sir. Right. Come on, now. Jump to it. Jump to it. Five years, chap. He's wait about. Three strike for kissing a German spy. Gentlemen, just a final recapitulation to make sure there can be no misunderstanding concerning the call signs. The right battalion will land on beach A and will use the call Verney. The left battalion will land on beach B and will use the call Carlos. The centre battalion will enter the harbour followed by the sappers and they will both use the call Martin. Brigade headquarters will use the call Drake. Now don't forget, the sappers have got a big job on the lock gates. They'll need all the time I've given them. Well, it's getting on towards time we dropped anchor. We shall be at position X in 30 minutes. No chance of any slip-up, is there? I hope not, sir. All the battalion commanders were quite happy. The air corporations laid on. We've just had confirmation that the bombers will cross the coastline just as the first landing is made. So they should be able to take care of any possible interference around here. Fine. If everything goes according to plan, the first flight of Verney should be at Beach A in three minutes. Must be going up these cliffs now. The first flight of Carlos should be just about approaching Beach B. Flank up there, you follow up. Okay. The 
second flight of Vernie just embarked, sir. Right, let him go. says landing successful, heavy opposition being encountered. Well, what's happened, sir? There'd be no heavy opposition there unless the Bosch knew something. Well, that's impossible, sir. Nothing's impossible. Wonder what's happening to Carlos. About time we heard something from him. Battalion headquarters should be ashore by now. Try and get in touch with them. Oh, see you all up there! Get over here! Are they all up? They're all here, sir. I'm going to have a look. A minute, sir. B Company of Quarters, sir. They're practically finished. That sounds bad. You better tell Brigade. Sir. Come on, Don. We'll check up on that. Hello, Drake. Hello, Drake. This is Carlos calling. Carlos calling. I have a message for you. Hello, Carlos. Hello, Carlos. Drake calling. Message from Carlos, sir. Enemy in force. First flight wiped out. Bill, tell them to put Plan Edward into force immediately. There's no time to waste. We land brigade headquarters on BK at once. Send a message to aircraft to attack town objectives without delay. Get ready to land Martin on both sides of the harbor at once. The sooner we get on the job, the better. Message from aircraft, sir. Successfully completed job. That's the bombing of the aerodrome, sir. But report enemy land reinforcements in strength approaching from east. I said nothing was impossible, didn't I? It's quite obvious now that Bosch knows quite enough about this show. Those are fellows. Yes, I think so, sir. Big work.
Good. All right, that's their position. What the hell's happened to Carlos? Bill. Yes. What about Carlos? I don't know. I keep trying to get them. Runner, go and tell Signals to try Carlos again. Yes. Please try to get Carlos again, sir. Hello, Carlos. Hello, Carlos. Drake calling. Drake calling. Hello, Carlos. <laughs> Are you receiving me? Tell them there's no reply. Very good, sir. No reply from Carlos, sir. Well, tell them to keep trying. Very good, sir. Ships too, by the look of it. Did you hear that? Guns, wasn't it, sir? Yes, I'm afraid it was.
object of the raid has been achieved. Lock gates, oil storage tanks, harbor equipment were destroyed. One enemy submarine was put out of action. Our own losses, both in men and craft, were very heavy. The enemy had been warned. He was waiting for us. And although our troops fought throughout with great skill and gallantry, they were not able to effect the surprise that had been hoped for. They paid the price of bad security. The next of kin of casualties have been informed. Nasty casualty list today. Yeah, it's a bit of a blow. Wonder where it was. Papers don't give away much, do they? Well, as a matter of fact, I think I can enlighten you on that point. This is only the beginning of things, I'm afraid. Quite in confidence, of course. Oh, yes, yes, of course, naturally. I have a friend who's a director of a very big munition factory, and he asked me not to mention it, naturally. Got a light? Um, oh, thank you, sir. Well, to cut a long story short, this um, fellow has a brother who knows somebody in the war office, and I think you can take it as pretty authentic coming from such a source, but apparently there's a big stunt coming off about the middle of next month.